What's going on, podcasters and YouTubers? This is Hav here, one of your hosts from The Real Fan Review, coming out of Long Island, New York. With me today, we got our man in the chair, Al. How's it going, everybody? Yes, sir. We also got our boy over here, Sanj. Good evening, everybody. As always, it's a pleasure to be with you. Yes, sir. No, B, B not feeling too well, so B, feel better, brother. We'll see you on Thursday night for Top Gun Maverick, which is going to be one of our topics for tonight. We're going to go ahead and get you guys ready for Top Gun Part 2 or Top Gun Maverick, give you a little prep there for that. But before that, we got some new stuff this week. We got some trailers that came out. We got Thor Love and Thunder trailer that finally came out on uh, last night with the NBA uh, Eastern Conference Finals. We also have the Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning trailer. And then we also got some news about some Star Wars directors directing some movies, and we'll see which one of the fellas want to see more. So let's get right into that Thor Love and Thunder trailer that came out yesterday with that blowout win. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Thor Love and Thunder came out with their trailer, and I have to unfortunately say that your boy Hav was unimpressed. Oh, my God. No. You know, and, and and I'm wondering if my expectations are just out of whack because Doctor Strange 2 and all these other, you know, phase four movies and TV shows. I'm like, what's happening? But either way, it was still great to see Thor. It's great to mm -hmm. see, you know, Natalie Portman in her mighty Thor outfit doing her damn thing, seeing Valkyrie doing her damn thing and finally getting a look at our gore, the God Butcher. Pretty intense, pretty crazy. I wish they would have shown something with Gore the God Butcher doing something, but I guess they're going to save that for the movie, which is yeah. kind of good, kind of good, but didn't get me excited with just seeing him in, in weird like backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> Al, how about yourself, man? You got a chance to watch the trailer. What'd you think? Yeah, um, I don't know. Like I, I like I said off air, it, it's kind of like I liked it. It's mm -hmm. got me. It definitely made me want to see this movie, especially trying to see what they're doing with the. Um, the female Thor storyline, how mm -hmm. they're incorporating Jane Foster and everything. But in terms of like um, Thor as a character, I feel like they're making him too comical. Like it made me um, think back to Thor, the first Thor, and he was more of like more serious. Not that he was like, you know, a brooding type character, but he was more serious about right. what he was, his importance, his significance. And, um, I understand this movie is going to be about him refining himself and so forth, but I feel like it's going more of the comedy route, and I don't know how much that has to do with Taika Waititi because he's doing this one, right? Yeah, he's the, he's the one who did Thor Ragnarok, so it's kind of yeah. like that same feel, that Thor Ragnarok feel, where it's kind of jokey but has its serious moments, you know? Yeah, and that's where I, I'm glad that they got somebody um, like what's his name to play Gore. Christian Bale because Christian Bale, yeah yeah because he can come with the intensity that'll hopefully counteract the the comic the comic aspect that the rest of the movie is going to seem to have. Mm -hmm. um, but as a whole, it looks good. You know, I like the, the I like the way they seem to be at least giving Thor an arc in this movie. You know, mm -hmm. so. It'll be interesting to see where they take it, how much they incorporate everybody around him, like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, how much are they involved in this movie? Um, are they going to replay up the love dynamic between him and Jane and right. so forth? Um, I'm glad that they didn't leave Valkyrie out of it. Like, she seems to have a big role in the movie. So, yeah, yeah I'm just glad that they're giving it balance. But, I'm, it. it like I said, it just scares me that they may be trying to do too much comedy with with the character. Yeah, I mean, and listen, I, I think I saw the same text messages going back between you and Sanj. And Sanj, it seemed like he kind of felt almost the same way as Al did about the the humor of it. But that is kind of Taika Waititi's style. You know, he's Jojo Rabbit was similar, taking something serious and making it somewhat relatable or something that people can actually watch and not just not just feel the the anger towards it, but to kind of watch the movie, but still have its it's heartfelt moments like Thor Ragnarok had a lot of deaths in it, man. You know, we, we, we lost a lot of people in that movie, but it was still jokey. So it's like, it's a blend of the humor plus the real. What, 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 what did you think of the trailer? Uh, I mean, I, I agree with what both of you have said so far. I mean, I, I'm holding on hope um, for, because Taika Waititi's involved because, because of 
of Jojo mm-hmm. Rabbit, right? Right. He took it was a, it was a you know a very funny, heartwarming story set you know um, in a shitty the, time the, period. <laughs> yeah, in the backdrop <laughs> of the of the Holocaust, you know. Yeah. So so I mean, and you had that seriousness to it there, and it was very very that movie was very well done. I mean, I I, I liked the the first teaser trailer. Um, except for the fact that they had Jane Foster, you know, wielding the hammer already, you know, <laughs> like that's something you save. Like the moment we saw, ima- remember how the, the theater exploded when Cap, you know, um, when the hammer went to Cap, right? Yeah. And it, it's kind of like, that looks like one of those moments. It looks like a very similar scene when Jane, um, uh, the, when the hammer goes to her. And like everybody's, you know, even Thor is, is is surprised that she can wield the hammer. So it's like, I didn't want to see that in a trailer. Right. I didn't want to see that. I wanted to be, I wanted to have that moment in the theater. Right. So now we know that's coming. But I mean, but other than that, the first trailer, the teaser trailer is really good because it really did show, um, you know, like a, like a redemption, arc. not necessarily a redemption, arc, but Thor finding himself again. Right. You know, like in the first story, he was, you know, like a petulant child, almost like an adolescent. And it was like him growing up. You know, he had to had to earn back the right to wield the hammer. Right. You know, he, he you know, even his dad took the power away from, him, you know, and, and, yeah. and until he was worthy again, he wouldn't be able to wield the hammer. And he had to really find that. Um, and now, you know, he's lost that he's lost that something in him to be, you know, a hero and wanting to be in the you know the leader and and what he was supposed to be so now he cast all that off so now what's what is he going what is he going to find right what who is he going to be right you know so i i they really made it look like a movie like that so that made me excited for the the movie seeing that but then this trailer comes and it, for me the one thing i'll add to what you guys said because i'm not it, all of the stuff that you guys said so i'm not going to restate that right the cgi also looks like shit it looks like <laughs> video game backdrops it, I, I, I'm and I'm really I'm really like scared about it because, you know, Ow. don't tell them to look at the She-Hulk trailer, <laughs> right? Oh God, right? You know, so I mean, just you know, with with what happened with Doctor Strange, you know, I know I wasn't on to talk to you guys, when, you know, even though we went to see, you know, we we right. know how we felt about it. Um, it has me thinking: Is Marvel falling off? Mm. Are we? Are we? Are we getting to that mm. point? Wondering myself, brother. Am I mean, am I, did I really just say it out loud? I mean, you <laughs> yeah, know. And I just I want to know who at Marvel has the ass fetish that there's an ass shot now in almost everything. <laughs> yeah, okay that was kind of crazy. See that <laughs> you you took too much. <laughs> Not for nothing, dude. You flicked, dude. Too you much. flicked too hard. You flicked too hard, and then they're both sitting there like, "Oh well, you know." Should Disrespectful. We but they're all, they're both drooling over Thor, and we're like, Valkyrie. I thought you didn't like boys. You no, know what I mean? Remember, she seemed unimpressed. She offered a grape. Uh. Oh wow! <laughs> wow! We're taking it that. Oh, We're taking goodness. it that way. Okay. Yeah, man. I guess I, I guess Mjolnir is the only hammer Thor wielded. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, isn't, didn't they already portray the, her character? Yeah, right. Yeah, there. that's into females. Yeah, 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 yeah. So kind of crazy, man. But you know, one yeah. of the newer things on this trailer that we didn't get in the first teaser trailer was Gore the God Butcher. I mean, again, played by our our, our famous Batman there, Christian Bale. And a fantastic actor, by the way. He's not just the Batman. He's done so many yeah, great he's, movies. Yeah. I know he's, he's not bad in any favorites. Yeah, yeah Sean, absolutely. Sean says he's he like, doesn't do anything bad at all. No, you can't. You can't. You can't name the 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 the, the role where Christian Bale was bad. At, right. You know. So I mean, you can't, like, even, you can't even tell me the movie that Christian Bale was in that was bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so so I mean, seeing Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher, I don't know if you know him. What he looks like in the comic books, I personally, not, I saw what he looks like in the comic books. It doesn't. It's not the same kind of look or feel. But at the same time, he's not that important. Where it's like you need to be photo accurate to the comic books. I kind of like that we can see that it's Christian Bale, and also I just trust in this guy as an actor that he's going to kill it. What was your take on how he looked and the kind of vibe that he gave you? It very he was very menacing, mm-hmm. which um, that's that's what you want from any villain, right? You want you want you want him to be very very menacing, and he and, and Christian Bale is selling it, you know, just mm-hmm. in the few clips that we saw of him, he he's, yeah. he seems very intense, and he doesn't seem like one of these villains that's gonna do too much, but he's gonna have a very very 
big impact by by just kind of imposing himself, imposing his will. Yeah. You know. How about you? How would you think of Gore the God Butcher and how he appeared? Um, well, kind of like you, like not having any idea what he's supposed to look like. Right. I just took it for how they presented it. Um, you know, you know, like we're all saying Christian Bale's gonna put in a good, a great performance. So it's just seeing how he portrays the character, seeing what powers or abilities this guy has, because since they didn't make him um an overwhelming presence because mm-hmm. he seemed um uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not frail, but he doesn't look like, you know, they made a, a point of accentuating the size and, and muscular uh, definition of Thor, mm-hmm. whereas Gore seems the opposite. So what abilities is he bringing to the table that he can right. take down gods? Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, because I have no idea, like I said, what his powers are, what his abilities are. Is it that sword that they see him grabbing for, mm-hmm. um, or is this something that he has? Right. Uh, and then also, what's his backstory? You know, because it's going to sound like it seems like it's going to be from the way they've presented the character so far in the trailer. Like he's a very serious character. Like he didn't seem like, like like when what's the name Helen Mira played um, uh, the sister Hella. Yeah, Hella. She gave it like a somewhat of a little bit of a comedic aspect to it. Right. Yeah. Whereas I don't think I, I'm not getting that vibe from what they've showed of Gore so far. So it'll be interesting to see what his backstory is that he's so serious and why he's trying to take down these gods. Yeah, so, absolutely. And yeah. and I just I think that's that's the thing that I think was missing from the trailer is something to show why we should fear Gore the God Butcher. Right? We just saw him in different things. Like, you know, I I like seeing Thor given the Matrix. Come here, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, I, there was That's nothing that I saw that was like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see that battle scene. You know, like like San said, that scene where we see uh, Natalie Portman's Mighty Thor, when the hammer comes to her, it looks like they're fighting together, but they're not fighting anything spectacular or big. It looks mm-hmm. like there's something going on around them that's happening. They're just handling business. Then everything that we do see with Gore, the God Butcher, is just him kind of walking, looking menacing. Nothing else. So it's just like I don't feel that 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 like oh I can't wait to see them throw down. You know He's what I mean? Wrap so, them in his bandages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like we brought him into a black and white world. Like, I was just like, gonna say it. That was another thing I was curious about. Why does it go from all that color to a monochrome when he's fighting Gore? Yeah, like, I wonder that if it's like they're fighting in the or dark something? or something. That fucked just... up CGI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, Al, don't let him see the She Hulk trailer. <laughs> Jesus. By the way, Sam, did you see the She Hulk trailer? I did not. Yeah, don't go look, dude. Uh, okay. They spent so all their money dude. making the Hulk look good. They forgot the main character. They, yeah, they forgot the main one. <laughs> yeah, throw some green paint on her. They went over to the Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> not they went over even, to the Star bro. Trek. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, sound stage and said, "Can we get some of that green paint to use for the aliens?" You know, <laughs> dude. It's as if me and Brandon were doing the CGI, dude, <laughs> oh, okay. for the first time. Crazy. But anyway, Brandon man, listen. actually be really good at it, though. That's I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> not putting anything past B, bro. Uh, yeah, he's, he's weird. He's got a little talent on little things here yeah. and there, right? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, man. But listen, that's our thoughts on the Thor Love and Thunder trailer, man. What did you guys think about it? Uh, I mean, to be honest, like, I keep hearing people were saying they were excited. They're looking forward to the movie more. Listen, I was looking forward to this movie regardless. You got Christian Bale and Thor in this movie. I'm watching it. It's a Marvel movie. I'm watching it. But I wanted the trailer to give us, oh, like undeniable. Like, go watch the Infinity War trailer that came out. That that mm, that gave you the no, business. I, I mean, that the, the teaser trailer should have been enough. Yeah, that really got me excited. I mean, the use of um, oh, the song from the Guns N' Roses song. I can't remember. The... Sweet anyway. child of mine. Sweet yeah. child of mine. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, I mean, I I love that song. Yeah. Gives me a lot of great memories from college. There you go. Memories, but um. Like you, you play that song and it really hits people hard. And then you put a, they really put a nice trailer, you know, ar- around it, except, yeah. you know, for the you know, part where Natalie Portman gets the hammer. But, um, you won't let but it go. if they had just <laughs> left it, if I'm not going to let it go, if they had just left it at that, that could have been the only trailer. Like, you don't need to show me anything of a movie other than it's happening. Right. You know, give me a little bit and that's it. I, I don't need you. four or five trailers. Like we've talked about this before. I don't, I don't need all these trailers showing me the, basically the whole movie before we get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. 
Yeah, man. So let's let's get on to the next trailer that came out yesterday as well. It came out way before the Thor trailer. The Thor trailer came out at night, but mm -hmm. in the daytime, we got Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, <laughs> with Tom Cruise still trying to kill himself some point. <laughs> like, he won't give up until he does it. But uh, yeah, it looks interesting. There was no real dialogue, a lot of scenes, a lot of interesting stuff. I got to say, some of the cool shots that I saw was the horses riding in the in the desert with the, the wind and the dirt and the dirt and sand in the air. You mean and that wasn't like, like re reused footage from the mummy? <laughs> <laughs> right. Or Dune. <laughs> 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 that's that was one of them too yeah but like it, it was it looked like they were riding in the dirt there was a sniper trying to get them it was like looks cool and then let's mm -hmm. not forget that last last stunt that they did on there where it looks like tom cruise is jumping off of a hill off mm -hmm. of a mountain and he's just flying in the air with a parachute like this guy is absolutely nuts and you know it's not cgi mm -hmm. he actually did this nonsense al tell me man what was your thoughts on that dead reckoning trailer it looks good. I mean, I've been a big fan of the Mission Impossible franchise since the first one. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've seen every one. I've enjoyed every one. You know, they're not the greatest movies. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, they're entertaining. Tom Cruise is one of those actors where I wouldn't say he's a great kind of like what we were saying about um, uh, Brad Pitt last time. You know, right. great actor. Don't get me wrong. But I wouldn't say he's one of the greatest so I've enjoyed almost every Tom Cruise movie I've watched, and he's always held it down as um, was it Ethan Hawke? No, yeah, Hunt. Ethan, Hawk, Ethan Hunt. Hunt. Ethan Hunt. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, it, I'm expecting a great movie, a, a great time, incredible action scenes. Yeah, but he needs to stop running, kid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's how he stays in shape. Yeah, every dude. movie he spends like fifty percent of the movie running. It's it's. <laughs> It's but it looks crazy. And is that Haley Atwell? Is she? Yeah, the... Yes, it is. Oh, yes. I was going to say. Yeah. She sold uh, herself Carter. back up. Yeah, yeah man. She's nice. definitely back it, in there. So <laughs> I wanted, I'm interested to see, is she playing like an MI, MI5 or MI6? What is it? MI6? MI6. Yeah. See if maybe she's like an MI6 agent. What is it? Because I hope she, I hope they don't downplay her character and make her just be like, you know, the the damsel that needs saving. No, no, I hope they make her character. Ass. Yeah, she can handle herself. Yeah. So I Absolutely. hope they let her do that. Well, Sanj, what did you think about the trailer, man? You get a chance to watch it earlier. I did. Uh, it's, it's So here's what I thought about it. It's Dune meets Da Vinci Code uh, <laughs> meets, uh, like, Fast and Furious. It, that's what... <laughs> that's Definitely what an action like. blend of movies. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what it looked like. I mean, it looks like it's going to be a Mission Impossible movie. That's, just, that's what it looks like. You know, what do you, what's your guys' take on, on, like, these trailers? Like, I was surprised that we waited so long before we got a Thor trailer. But then I saw the ending of the Dead Reckoning, and it's a year away. So it's like, <laughs> what's the happy medium for you guys as far as trailers go? Like, do you want a trail? Uh, Science basically doesn't want a trailer until the movie comes out. Like, <laughs> don't show me anything, right? Mm -hmm. But like, what's like a true happy medium, right? Because I think there used to be trailers like almost a year out, six months out at the least. But now we're getting down to like some movies are waiting till like almost three months, two months before the movies comes out. What's a good timeline for you to get excited for a movie, Sanj? Six months. Six months, right? Get because, you kinda... I mean, I can know about it from the year before or um, even like, especially like bigger things like for, you know, um, franchises and things like that. If you want to if you want to announce it like a couple years in advance or a year in advance or whatever, that's fine. But I don't need a trailer till you till you know that you're going to be hard on the 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 release date. Don't put out a trailer. Right. You know, um, for because we saw that going all the way back to even like Star Trek two thousand nine, Black Widow, right? That, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, and this has been going on for a while, so it's not even um, pandemic induced. Where they make all these promises, oh, it's coming out on this date, this, that, and the other, and then stuff gets pushed back for like six months to a year and whatever, and that just that's frustrating, right, right? right? And then in the pandemic, stuff gets pushed back for years and years and years. So until you know that, okay, the movie's coming out on this date. You know, don't put out a trailer, and that can, and for me, I I just need six months, and I don't even need like four or five. Trailers. Just need something quick, thirty seconds to give me an idea of the look and feel. Mm -hmm. and that's it. That's all yeah, I need. That's all you need. Yeah, I'm I'm starting to think like that, where it's like yeah. maybe six months out, we get the teaser trailer, then maybe two more months after that, or three months after that, two to three, 
we get the real trailer. And I think that should be it. No more. You know what I mean? Because once they get into that second trailer or third trailer, yeah, it's like, you now you're showing me too much. too much. Now you're yeah. showing me too much, man. If your first trailer and your teaser didn't do it, the movie sucks. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Al? No, yeah, I was actually thinking the same thing. Like, I would rather uh, maybe three months, six months before the movie's releasing do nothing more than teaser trailers. Because to your point, if you have to show people more than that in order to get them interested, how much hype does your movie have for being released anyway? And how much, how good is the story? Because if you have to show us, like Sandra was saying earlier, if you have to show us a good portion of what your story is about in order to get us hooked on going to see it, then how good is this story? Because like you said, which one was it? Well, um, Endgame. Everybody was already going to go see it as it was that we right. only saw what trail clips from like the first five, 10 minutes. <laughs> and that's all they kept using for all of those trailers was the right. first five, 10 minutes on a movie that was almost three hours long. So if you keep having to show too, like, why are we seeing um, Jane in the teaser? She should have been maybe alluded to, hinted to, but not shown at right. all. And the reason why I think they ended up having to show her grabbing the, the hammer was because you don't see her doing anything but using the hammer throughout the, the her parts in the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's making me hope the story is stronger than it's looking based on the fact that in such an early trailer, they're already having to show so much. Yeah. And you know, you know that's so. something they say about the trailer too, because in the trailer, there's no real story except for Thor is trying to rediscover himself. And he's just, while he's doing this, he also witnesses that there's something going on with the gods with God, and Gore the God Butcher. But we don't know why Gore the God Butcher is doing what he's doing and what's mm -hmm. leading Thor to him or anything like that. So, Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, some characters, you know, and we've had these discussions before, some characters just don't do well on their own, even though they're really good characters in an ensemble, right? Mm -hmm. um, like Hulk or Thor. The reason somebody like Iron Man works or Captain America is like they have Iron Man has stuff going on outside of him being Iron Man, right? Like he has to think through the problem. He's he's also the brain. He's the brain yeah. and the brawn, right? And then once it's time to go into action, then he puts on the suit and then he's he's the muscle. He spends a lot of time outside. Of, Tony, we see a lot of Tony Stark, right? You know, if not more Tony Stark than than Iron Man. Right, especially so, in Iron Man three, way too it, much. Oh man, we still talk about <laughs> Iron Man three. Anyway, right. uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, and a lot of the and a lot of the characters are good that way. That's why you know, like Wanda in WandaVision works so well because it wasn't about her being Scarlet Witch; it was about her being Wanda. And yeah, in the end, she turned into to Scarlet Witch. Right, right. So I mean, maybe Thor is one of those characters that, outside of being Thor, he doesn't bring much to the table. He's you know, he's not bright. You know, he doesn't have any good ideas, really. You know, so we're gonna we're gonna have be a to brute. see him as Yeah, <laughs> be, be a, a brute, brute, right? <laughs> but the thing is with Jane Foster, she actually is like, you know, a scientist and, and a brain and a genius, you know. So I mean mm -hmm. there's more to her than wielding the hammer. If, yeah. if you know, even though she now gets the power to wield the hammer, there's more to her than being Thor's love interest. Right, so I mean, they they could do a lot with her character. Yeah, I'm hoping for a lot from her, man. We'll see how it goes in there, man. Yeah. I'm just looking forward to all this stuff, man. I mean, look, either way, two good, fantastic movie trailers or two movies that I I'm looking forward to at the least. You know, that Mission Impossible series has only gotten better. You know, I I, I definitely love Ghost Protocol and the and the I forgot what the fourth the fifth one was called, but the fifth one was amazing as well. But the, the I think this is the seventh and eighth one that they're making right yeah, now. I think so, yeah. Right, so I mean, which that one, Mission which Impossible one was it series with with the virus. That was my favorite one. That's no, nah, I don't think that was Ghost Protocol. So that might have been the fourth one, unless I can't remember with the like, virus. Oh, wasn't that the third one? That was with the um, that was with, with uh, the girl that played Felicity. What was her name? Right? Isn't that the one where he, she dies in the beginning when he was trying to save her? Oh man, all right, we got, yeah, I can't. Yeah, remember. Yeah, anyway, that's what, yeah, well, yeah. I'll look it up. It's the same thing. That's, yeah, they're yeah. all the same. For, but all those movies, man. <laughs> I mean, like, I think the last one was kind of iffy, but the two before that last one was was good, really, really good. So, I mean, I'm only hoping because look, those are just straight up action movies. Can't wait to see what those things look like and how they yeah. are and how the story plays out. So, 
you know, and like I was saying, Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt, they they may not be the, our, our number one actors out there, you know, like Christian Bale, Russell Crowe, you know, um, Denzel Washington, any of these kind of actors like that. But every movie that they're in is they're pretty much standouts and they're amazing in their roles. So looking forward to these guys, man, and seeing them in their movies, man. And listen, if you're you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on a, on a podcast play app, either hit the comment section or email us at the Real Fan Review. Which movie are you looking forward to? Are you looking forward to that Dead Reckoning from Mission Impossible, or how about that Thor: Love and Thunder trailer? Love to see what you guys think out there. So give us a, a little shout there and let us know what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, which leads to the next topic, which I wanted to talk about because. We're big Star Wars fans. We we like the Star Wars movies, even when they they're not so great like the last two Star Wars <laughs> movies or a couple of other ones there. But at the same time, they're big event movies and stuff that we love. You know, they're killing it on the Disney Plus with the Mandalorian. So I, I'm just so curious to know what's going on. And I, there was a report last week that there's like four directors making Star Wars movies. We got Taika Waititi, who's doing Thor: Love and Thunder right now. We have John Watts, who was part of the Spider-Man trilogy that we just got with the No Way Home. We also have Kevin Feige himself is saying that he's going to produce and and direct the film for Star Wars. And last but not least, we're still waiting on Patty Jenkins to do her Rogue Squadron. So, I mean, those are four fantastic directors, Um, even though, you know, with me, Patty Jenkins, Jenkins kind of like with that Wonder Woman 1984, kind of like I'm I'm, I'm (laughs) hesitant. But I just know how great she is at, at directing films. She killed it with the first Wonder Woman and the movie she did before that. I think it was uh, I can't remember the name of the movie, but I know she killed it with the first movie that she did besides the Wonder Woman series. Yeah. But out of those four directors, Al, if you could pick the one that you're more excited to see because of who's directing it, which one would it be? Would it be the John Watts? Would it be Kevin Feige, Taika Waititi or Patty Jenkins? Um, honestly, it would be the Taika Waititi, not only because it's him, uh, but it's the style that he would bring to it. Um, Star Wars has always had the kind like kind of with what Marvel does with the movies where there's more of a serious theme to them, but right. they have the comedic elements like you have Han Solo in them with the funny one liners here and there to bring relief to the story. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would like to see what Taika Waititi could bring to a story, a Star Wars story. Um, and I'm glad that they're bringing in different people with different styles because um, one of the problems I had with the last trilogy wasn't that they were bringing in different stories or that they were saying things different. It was It was just you weren't telling the story you were given. Like, you know, these right. were three different, dire- th- uh, well, two directors that were given the opportunity to tell their style, but it was supposed to be the final arc of the, the Skywalker, Skywalker saga. Yeah. But yet you make the whole last three movies about a character who is not a Skywalker. You don't even make her a Skywalker. You made her, um, Palpatine, you know, like a, a Palpatine. Yeah. Like yeah. And the, so if you stay now that they're not going to do anything where there's any expectation to the old storyline and that everything is going to be new. I think we can have fun with these stories, fun with this universe, kind of like what's happening with Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. They took a completely new character. They went to a different part of this star Wars universe and they're telling a new story, even though they've brought in some of the old characters, they're doing it in a way that pays homage to the old character, but doesn't deviate for the, from the style of the new show. Gotcha. Um, so as long as they can do that and keep it going and give us new areas of that universe to get into, I'm all for it. I'm a big Star Wars fan, so I'm all for it. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think Taika Waititi would be interesting because, again, he would bring that sense of humor to something that's almost like serious. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, I think that his sense of humor is a little better than the forced humor we got in The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi, that humor was so off brand. Like the the hello is someone on the phone humor that yeah. that was so stupid. Oh, come on. That that pissed me off. In, in the was it the Last Jedi or was that the uh, the the one the second one in the middle? No, that was the Rise of Skywalker. Oh God, that was so. No, bad. no, no. You're right. You're right. No, you're right. It was, it was the Last Jedi. It was the beginning, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with with Poe. <laughs> oh God. But to be real with you, after seeing. 
the trilogy of Spider-Man, the No Way Home, Far From Home, and um, uh, what was the first one? It was something Home? Homecoming. 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 After seeing yeah. those three movies, I'm like, you know what? Give that guy John Watts a shot. Let's see what he could do. Give him a trilogy because yeah. his thing was amazing. Now, granted, it's Spider-Man. It's going to be hard to fuck that up. But at the same time, I mean... Uh, but you, what? you're right Sanj. spider-man three uh-huh. spider-man three yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sanj got it yet yeah but the way he handled the three uh, it's just like yo dude i would want this guy to handle the next franchise for me to see how it goes from his point of view so john yeah. watts for me because i think like kevin feige while it's interesting and, and it's in and, and it's you know his he's been kind of like directing all these marvel movies kind of you know he's, i don't see him as a director for a star wars movie I want to see a director director be a Star Wars movie. So John Watts for me. Sanj, how about you? Man, Patty Jenkins, Kevin Feige, Taika Waititi, and uh, John Watts. I got to go with Taika Waititi also just yeah. because I think he has the widest range of skills mm-hmm. because of the way he does humor. Like it takes real genius to do humor and then to do humor in something that's serious as well. So I I, I just think he he's of the three of the four of them, I think he's the best storyteller. Gotcha. So um, for me, it would be Taika Waititi also for all the reasons you guys said, and just also because I think he would be a, the, the best storyteller. Yeah, sounds good, man. I like that, man. Yeah, man. So listen, once we hear more news about Star Wars in the next movie, because I, I'm sure we have to hear something soon. It's been like, what, three years now since the last Star Wars movie? So, I mean, right now, everything's been on Disney+. Plus. We got I mean, Obi-Wan tomorrow. <laughs> Obi-Wan tomorrow night. So let's let's hope on the movie end that it comes back and becomes this event movie that we always want to see in the theaters where it's like millions of people go to see it at one time and just in awe and just all the craziness of Star Wars and the characters mm-hmm. and the places. I, I just I cannot wait to the next Star Wars to give it another shot, man. So mm-hmm. got my fingers crossed. You know, got that those original fingers crossed. The original Star Wars trilogy was such a huge cultural event. Mm-hmm. I, I can't help but think that the the Star Wars universe is suffering from, you know, every, everyone who takes the next swing at it trying to hit a home run, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like sometimes, you know, in baseball, when you always trying to hit a home run, you end up striking out more times than not, mm-hmm. you know, instead of instead of, instead of just doing a good in between movie, you know, to set up a, some story and whatnot, everybody wants to p- attach their name to this this big blockbuster that <laughs> it, you know that is culturally iconic and whatnot and then you get stuff like you know the rise of skywalker yeah, yeah. man boo <laughs> <laughs> boo <laughs> rise of skywalker oh, and the last jedi oh. lost me kid <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah man so listen that's gonna be the news of the week for us here man that that's that stuff that i've heard all last week and one of the things we like to do is talk about the news, the rumors, and the big stuff that's happening in the movies, especially for our blockbuster movies. The reason why we go to the movies are for these huge movie events. So let's get right to the next big movie event for us, which is going to be Top Gun 2, Top Gun Maverick. Now, this movie is how many years too late, Al? 30. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I think the movie came out and I was still an infant. So <laughs> it's a while ago. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, I I had the fortune to watch because Netflix hooked it up. And if you guys still haven't seen Top Gun 1, it's on Netflix. Most of you guys have Netflix. Go ahead and look for it. It's right there. You don't have to buy it or rent it. You just pay your monthly subscription to Netflix. (laughs) Not a sponsor. And uh, (laughs) go ahead and watch Top Gun 1. Or get your brother's or sister's password. There you go. (laughs) While you can. Not a sponsor. While you can. Not all superheroes wear capes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, like, you know, Top Gun was on there for us to watch. And to be honest with you, I know I've seen the movie once in my life. I just had no recollection besides Planes and Goose. That's all I remember was Planes, Goose, and Tom Gu- and, and Tom Cruise. Maverick. I didn't even remember Tom Cruise's name was Maverick. I didn't realize. That. I was like, oh, that's why Top Gun 2 is named Maverick. I know. It's just so crazy. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> mm, looking sus bro mm-hmm. i know man so looking let's get sus. you guys let's get you guys prepared for top gun maverick coming out this week out sanj did you guys get the chance to watch this movie top gun again yeah or did, are you doing off the memory <laughs> it's it's burned into my memory that oh, is so. one of my that top gun like is one of my favorite 
movies like all time other than other than the movies i've said are my favorites all time right like, i just love top gun just because it's speed yeah. you know it's neat it's just fast and it's planes <laughs> going real fast and guys shooting it it's, there's no thinking involved it's not deep it's just yeah. it's just adrenaline and speed and 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 you know all the stuff the motorbikes it's everything right then the just the a lot of cool volleyball. shit <laughs> just a lot of cool shit it's like this is what you might do during the summer right yeah. you'll play volleyball you'll ride your motorbike to your girl's house to have a good time with her and then you'll go fly your jet you know what i'm saying you'll shoot down some migs you know what i'm saying it's like you you, you in your mind you're like you know this is something you could you, we talk about we love superhero movies and we love superheroes right but you could actually do all the shit that happens in top gun like just go join the air force right not a sponsor <laughs> not a sponsor right not a sponsor <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be very honest. If I was to join the military, I would probably join either the Navy or the Air Force. Why? Top Gun. Top Gun. Wow. How about you, Al? What, 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 how do you feel about Top Gun? You feel like how Assange feels that it's this speed, adrenaline, and cool shit. That's basically all the movie is. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> when I, because I, I hadn't seen the movie in I don't know how many years. Um, Dude, same, same. Because I remember when it came out, like it was on repeat on HBO. Like so, I think you know back then I saw it like fifty times. Right. Um, but over the weekend, I caught it again. I was sc- scrolling through Netflix. And I caught it. I said, you know what? Let me catch it. The movie's coming out next week. Let me right. Let me just throw it back on. And you know, it 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 amazed me how much the movie is the same thing on repeat. You know, <laughs> it's it, okay. It's, it's it's okay. It felt like it was the same dog fight. They just took different clips and said, "Okay, this is five different fights." You they know, reversed it. On the yeah, end. <laughs> yeah, because it felt like it was the same thing. The one plane going <laughs> this way. <laughs> The other thing going that way. <laughs> you know, the the funniest part, of, you know, and then the guys just busting on each other like every, you know, like we would in a locker room just fucking with each other yeah. after, you know, a, a thing and just bragging as to who's the best one. Kind of like, you know, you're playing basketball, you go to the locker room, you're like, yo, you saw when I, you know. So it was the same shit, just guys fucking with each other, dog, you know, trying to, you know, one up each other. Right. But the funniest scene for me in the movie was when they were recapping uh, when they lost to um, I, Viper, and the guy goes, he I asked so and so where where's where's where'd Viper go? He goes, where'd who go? <laughs> I de- yeah, that's that one scene when he goes, where did who go? I was like, I, I can't help but keep dying every time <laughs> I hear that line. But the movie, like, like even the the only thing I give it was I forgot. I'm I'm sad that that actress I don't remember her career taking off after this. No, but I think she did. You know, for for what that movie was at that time, I thought she did a good job at selling the love interest and for for as little time as they gave that romance to develop, like you could kind of see like she sold it as that it happened. Yeah, so she fell. For and her him. character was formidable too. I mean, she didn't yeah. she she didn't just swoon. And fall for him. It was no. Like she, she was very much his equal. Yeah, you know, and it was, it, you know, he had to, he had to come up to her level. Yeah, in order you for her, you lost to... that loving feeling. <laughs> now you're gone. <laughs> but bro, but bro, when when they were in the, I get, I think they were in the elevator, and Oof. then she goes back to them, right, and she looks back and he's like, the reason I'm so hard on you in the class. I don't want them to know that I've fallen for you. I'm like, oh, he got the draws. He got the draws. <laughs> I remember like eight year old me. GTD. Even if I didn't, right, GTD. right. I didn't, even though I didn't have the vocabulary at that point at like eight yeah. to say he got them draws, I knew it's like I understood the concept of what was about to go down. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, he getting that. He getting that. You know? <laughs> Dude, got you know what the most annoying part of that movie was for me, man? Every time that the two of them looked at each other, boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. Oh, wait, boom, so now let's, speaking of that, boom, boom. I was like, again, Gun- take your breath away, ketones. Like, come on, <laughs> yo, they had Top two Gun- songs in that movie. Top Gun low key had an ill soundtrack. Low key, it like, was you, two you know, songs. No, it was three because you had Highway to the Danger Zone, too. How Highway many times did they play that song? Every, every time, time they were, there was a, wait, every time they, they showed were, a plane. <laughs> 
They were, and then you, they and was, then you had the theme. Near, 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 near. <laughs> come on, yeah. that's the three. The theme song, take <laughs> my breath away, and, and, and danger zone. Like, come on. Huh? They were doing highway to the danger zone every time they had that guy that was pointing the cones on where to go. <laughs> <laughs> and like, that's not danger zone. That's that's safety zone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he is following the proper safety protocol. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what I'll tell you what That's This is another reason Why Top Gun's a great movie Top Gun made that guy's job Look so cool And he, he didn't even get to go Yeah Yeah he, yo, yo he had He's like Ooh And then after After every plane The way he walked off He's like yeah I did that Yeah Yeah I guided that plane <laughs> Right off that track <laughs> Like he just hit a three from half court. That that's the swagger he walked away with every time a plane took off. Yeah, exactly. But how great, how great is Top Gun as a movie? So like they can make that shitty job look so cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say the worst I, job in the Air Force, other than the guy who cleans the toilets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the guy in the Navy that does this and this. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there's a couple of guys maybe in the Navy that I don't know. You know, <laughs> oh, I did that one to myself. <laughs> Look at <Al. laughs> Anyway, <laughs> but you know what? It's funny because I when I ended the end of the movie, I looked at it. I was just, I look at the screen. I'm like. <laughs> Because Netflix now gives you three options. You either didn't like it, you liked it, or you loved it. And I was just mm. like, <laughs> I don't know which one I'd like. Because the movie <laughs> felt pointless, to me, honestly. Besides the, you know, of course, the ending when they finally got a chance to actually do what they were trained for in that dogfight. With, with, they said it was two planes. They really miscalculated when they got to six. Like, like it was <laughs> six planes out there with the two of them. And it was just like, all right, well, I mean, it seemed cool, but I really didn't catch what was really happening. So what I'm hoping with this new Top Gun Maverick, plus the age and time that we're in now, the story is going to be more impactful. And I think that we're going to see something crazy with the dog fights, with the airplane fights in the air. It's going to be more dramatic, I think. I think it's going to have a real, real good story because this story was more of just Tom Cruise as Maverick going through a training program. Having one dog fight and becoming a teacher, like it was just wasn't really much that happened in the movie. I mean, the whole thing with his partner Goose, yeah, that was fucked up and sad. But it, like, even that was like it was an accident. It wasn't something that that happened because of something else. It was just an accident that happened to Goose, you know. But yeah. um, you know what? Why don't you guys, especially Al, I mean, Simon, since you, you're a huge fan of Top Gun, tell me about your thoughts on Tom Cruise's Maverick character. I mean, I, just, I don't see any real depth to to the character. He's just, you know, you're what you would think of stereotypically of a flyboy, mm-hmm. right? A, a, a hot shot flyboy. He plays that character in the movie very well. They write that character very well because there's not much to it. He has a big ego and his ego, you know, the story arc is that his ego takes it because of his ego. He, his his uh, partner gets uh, gets killed. Right. Or gets well, into I, don't think, an I don't think it was because of his ego. He, I think he got caught in the jet stream or something like that. The jet stream of the the the, the, the fuel. jet wash. Hey, yeah. The jet wash. There it is. Okay. And he couldn't control the barrel roll. And when they they not the barrel roll, they were just turning kind of like in the air. And he couldn't when he ejected. He ejected his head and hit the top hit of the, the canopy. Hit the canopy. Yeah. 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 So it was just like that kind of like he quit after that. I believe. Right, he got spooked, and you know mm-hmm. he he gets a dose of reality that you know they're not you know they're not so so invincible, and then mm-hmm. he has to come you know he has to hit the low and then come back to the high, you know. So it it's a it's a fairly standard story arc. So I mean, this will get a little bit more about him, what happened to him, mm-hmm. you know, it, you know, in the twenty something years since we've since we've seen the character last, and ho- and hopefully there's a little bit more to it. It seems like he's just as it, from what we see in the trailer. It seems like he's just as impetuous. He just doesn't give a fuck no more. He's like, I'm really this good at what I do, right. and none of y'all can really fuck with me. <laughs> and I'm I don't want to get promoted because this is like what I enjoy doing. Gotcha, you know? man. So yeah. I mean, I, I'm just ex- I, I'm excited to see it because I think it's going to be more of the same, and I'm okay with that. 
Gotcha, man. And Al, for you, man, what what do you think as far as like where this movie left off? It's kind of like it's going to pick up where it left off, right? Where he's a teacher again. Yeah, because I, you know, and I never realized that in the with the movie that for being such a great pilot, showing that he has all these skills flying the plane, he never gets put out on in the world to like use those skills he becomes a teacher i never and it's his choice to become a teacher right you know at the movie he goes you have your pick you could go anywhere where are you gonna go he goes i i think i'm gonna stay here and teach like i i didn't see that like i would have thought he'd be like oh i have to give it a chance i'll think about it or something especially when they kept making it that he had to prove himself because of whatever supposedly happened with the dad so like I thought that that choice to become um, an instructor was like it, it, to me it was a, a, like anticlimactic. Like you did all of this to become a teacher, right? Like, I, I think that's I, what they were going for mm-hmm. to say that well, he doesn't feel the need to prove himself anymore. And it was and but you're right, it gotcha. was a bit simplistic. It was a bit yeah. simplistic of a way to do that, right? You know? Because yeah. it, entering that Top Gun program, you were the best of the best to fly the the most expensive planes and the most expensive equipment from the military. And then after he was successful in deterring the the the, the MiG twenty eights in the sky, mm-hmm. the all six of them. I think he shot down what three or four. Four of them. Yeah, he shot down four. Two of them ran away. No, you know what? He shot down three, and then Iceman shot down one. Val Kilmer. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I hope Val Kilmer's in this movie, man. No, well, no, he 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 passed. He's in there. Uh, po- they, like they refer to him. That there's a picture on one of the walls, ah, and they okay. refer to him that you know he's there, or you know he's there only because of their recommendation. You know, like he put gotcha. a good word in not for him. Yeah, man. So I was hoping Val Kilmer be in there. I mean, like I know we got Goose's son coming up in this movie too because they showed that in the trailers. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes, man. It should be interesting and fun. And, and I'm hoping that it shows some more dogfights. And again, with the updated, you know, technology as far as graphics go. Plus, you know, Tom Cruise is crazy. He'll probably, he probably flew those planes for real. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to say probably. 100% he flew a plane for real. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did because he wanted the cockpit scene to be as real as it could. Yeah. I think so- he did. That's going to be crazy to see it. And I think, like I said, with today's technology, the cameras, we're going to see some crazy shit on, on Thursday night with this movie, man. So it's going to be amazing. Really looking yeah. forward to seeing this movie. Um, there's not really a lot to say about the movie because, like we kind of said it, the movie's kind of simplistic. It just follows a thorough line of of him being fantastic, going to training, fucks up, something happens, <laughs> picks himself back up teacher <laughs> <laughs> well now now that he's the teacher there's uh, i mean i think there's probably going to be some hot shot young guy coming in yeah. right so he's going to be now mm. obi-wan to the to the to the luke skywalker <laughs> to the young character. padawan yeah. <laughs> right and there's going to be some hot shot coming in that thinks they're all that right yeah. and you know typical story arc for that situation yeah yeah i, I the one the one part i forgot that he was in it. Uh, i'm glad you brought it back up how of that goose's son is one of these guys yeah is one of these pilots mm-hmm. so it'll be interesting to see how they play that dynamic between oh uh, i see what they're gonna you do. know maverick and the, the son because you know i'm wondering does the son grow up holding a garage like mm-hmm. yo you know because of you i don't have my dad like i'm wondering if they play that dynamic in the movie and how much that's going to be part of the story. Yeah, I think he's being played or by the, could, uh, Miles Teller, too. Miles Teller's a great actor. Good yeah. actor, Miles Teller. Yeah. They could go the route where he's kind of overprotective of Goose's son and won't let him, you know, don't won't give him the the the, the, mo- the most dangerous assignment, well, even though he's the best one or something like that. There's possible, you know, the, there's all those things that they can, yeah. can yeah, do with Yeah, feel the that. responsibility over his son, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So, I mean, listen, guys, we're definitely going to be watching this movie this week. We are looking forward to it. I know Saj is looking forward to Top Gun. I got a need, a need for speed. (laughs) Oh, man. I can't wait to see They need to also come up. Yeah, they need to (laughs) learn how to give each other a pound or something because when they were playing that volleyball game, all they did was that high five, low five. High five, low five. High five, low five. Yo, dude, but besides, is one thousand percent correct. That whole movie was. This is if if you want to be cool, do this shit. <laughs> Ride a motorcycle, have a Smash freaking the cool chicks. jack, a jacket, fly a yeah. plane, 
Do it, okay. Last question. I promise, no more questions after this. <laughs> you can ask as many questions Yo, as you dude, want. Brother. You if, ask good questions. If you guys were in the military, would you go out wearing that white navy suit, the the, the suit that they wear whenever they go, they land on sea, or where they're, whenever they're in public? Hell oh, yeah, fucking yeah. Yo, that was. A... You know how much pussy they? I mean, that's what I'm. Cut that oh, out. come on. <laughs> Hell no, son. That's staying on, bro. <laughs> well, I you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna double down. You know how much pussy they get just because they're in uniform? Oh, kid. That's not especially no back way. then. I don't know about now. And then because listen, back listen, then, you know how many like chicks just go up to them and be like, Have you guys like been in, in combat? Yeah, we've been in combat. Have you killed people? We're not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> Come on now. How about you see how easy it is? Oh my He's goodness. A, you know what's funny, man? I, I'm realizing how much of a fucking hater I was as a child. <laughs> or not as a child, as a 20-year-old. Because whenever I would go out, I'm like, look at these cornballs. And then I'm like, Those now I'm looking at them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> for real. And each of them had what they went there for right next to them. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, who goes who goes to the club in that shit? And then there they are. <laughs> and where are the chicks? Leaving with them. Right there. In that right circle. There. Hate, 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 hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So listen, anybody who was in the Navy or the military, man, we appreciate you guys, especially this weekend, man, with Memorial Day yeah. weekend coming up, man. Absolutely. I know we're supposed to remember the past yeah. more than anything, but at the same time, brother, we appreciate you guys protecting our freedoms and, and fighting sisters. for us out here, man. And mm-hmm. hey, yeah, brothers and sisters out there, y'all handling business. So mm-hmm. keep it up, man. Do your thing, man. But uh, listen, that's going to be us for this week. We will be back next week with the Top Gun Maverick review where we will destroy the movie if it sucks and big it up if it's freaking awesome. So (laughs) come back, listen to us next week where we talk about Top Gun Maverick and any big important news that comes out during the week. We are the real fan review coming out of Long Island, New York, saying good night. We got my brother, Sanj. Good night, everybody, and be safe out there. We got our man in the chair, Al. Have a good night, everybody. Myself, Hob, saying thank you guys for listening. Please hit the subscribe button or hit that plus symbol on your podcast playlist so that we come to you every single week where we discuss our favorite pastime movies, blockbuster movies, movie news, movie rumors, all that stuff. So we'll see you guys on the next podcast. Until next time.